Welcome to GTEC Techno Solution Private Limited. The topic which we are going to discuss is about cells. So you can see here the depiction of a cell over here. So in this topic we are going to discuss about Daniel cell, voltaic cell, cell terminology and cell diagram or representation of a cell. Apart from that, we will be discussing about the electrochemical cell and the Gibbs energy of the reaction. So these are the topics which we are going to discuss now. This is about the electrical energy where you can able to see the depiction of an electrical energy in terms of the real time perspective. And we are going to discuss about the Wolchek cell. Also, we will be discussing about the cell terminology and we will be discussing about the zinc reaction. So, you can see here. Let's go with this one. Cells. In terms of the electrochemistry, the interconversation or interconversion of chemical energy and electrical energy is an important aspect that poses numerous applications. For example, batteries that supply electrical energy which is stored in the form of chemical energy for the operation of torch, radio, calculators and so on. Apart from that, conversely, the electrical energy is used to bring about certain chemical reactions which are industrially important such as we can say purification of metals like copper, this is the one, aluminium, this is the one, generation of gaseous chlorine, oxygen, hydrogen, electroplating, metal coatings and so on. The electrochemical or electrolytic processes are carried out in a device that is known as cell. So you can see here the depiction of the cell. An electrolytic or electrochemical cell consists of two conducting metal electrodes. So you can consider this one which is in contact with an electrolytic solution that separates them or placed separately in compartments containing suitable electrolytes. You can see here. So these are the electrodes and this is the electrolytic solution. So let us discuss about an electrochemical cell. You can see here the electrode copper metal is placed over here by this side. And over here by this side we have a zinc metal which is placed in an electrolyte. So these two are the electrodes. This one is the copper electrode. This one is a zinc electrode which has been connected to a wire and you can find a bulb which is placed in between them. So the electrolytic solution over here is 1M of copper nitrate CuNO3 twice and we will be having Cu2 plus ions and NO3 minus ions in the electrolytic solution. By this side if you see we will be having the electrolytic solution as 1M zinc nitrate. So we will be having Zn2 plus ions and NO3 minus ions in which the zinc electrode is dipped off. So here we have a salt bridge where at the end we have cotton which has been placed over here and this is filled with potassium nitrate that is KNO3 solution which is in aqueous form. So you can see here the bulb glows and this one is the indication of a salt bridge. The reason why the cotton has been placed over here is the solution should not mix with this electrolytic solution containing CuNO3 and ZnNO3 and this one is the electrode which contains common solution of KNO3 
that is k plus ions will be there and no3 minus ions will be there so this is the overall outline of how the electrochemical cell is defined when the voltage is applied so you can see here the voltage is applied in the electrochemical cell on passing overheat in this setup the bulb is going to be glowing and if you see by this side where the electrolytic solution contains zinc metal this zinc is over here in which it loses its electrons if a metal loses its electron then the reaction is called as oxidation so you can see here zinc metal losing its electron so it becomes zn2 plus and 2e minus so this is the losage of electron then it becomes oxidation if oxidation occurs then this region or this portion is called as anode so this zinc is acting as an anode over here so it loses its electron whenever a metal loses its electron it is called as anode and the reaction which takes place in that one will be called as oxidation so the anode loses its mass if we have a look by this side where we have the copper electrode from here to here you can see it gains two more electrons so the copper metal that is cu will be gaining electrons if a metal gains electron it is called as reduction that is cu2 plus plus 2u minus will be getting cu copper where it gains an electron and this is acting as a cathode the reason is it gains electron thereby you can see it gains so if a metal gains electron this is said to be reduction so the cathode gains its mass so this is how the electrochemical cell will be by one side it loses electron and by one side it gains its electron and this process continues so because of this you can see the electron gets moved from anode to cathode thereby the bulb is getting to be glowing the electrolyte may be an aqueous solution containing mostly the salt of the metal with which the electrode is made of or it may be ionically conducting solid there are generally two types of cells that are known as electrolytic cell this is the one electrolytic cell and the second one is electrochemical cell this is the one so you can find here how the electrolytic and electrochemical cell is processing each of them possesses different characteristics and it has been used in different applications generally an anode that is you can see the cathode reduction over here but in general the anode the oxidation reaction occurs and the cathode reduction reaction occurs so you can see here when the electrodes are connected externally through a wire and the electrons flow through them then the electrical circuit is said to be an open circuit if the electrodes are not connected externally and the electrons do not flow from one electrode into the other then the electrical circuit is said to be the closed circuit so this is about the fuel cell stack so you can see here how the fuel is going to be stored in the cell